Oh, hey, what's up? How's it going, everyone? Brett Max here for SummerSlam 1998. Uh, as corny as that intro was, it was the highway to hell from ACDC. Uh, Madison Square Garden, New York City, August 30th, 1998. Uh, the WWF was booming. It was becoming mainstream, and it was becoming something that everybody did. And there's a one lyric in that song by ACDC, A Highway to Hell, that says, my friends are going to be there too. And right before he says, I'm on a highway to hell, it says, my friends are going to be there too. And during the video package with Austin and The Undertaker, and when it says that, it's just it just rings true because so many people knew about this pay-per-view coming up. So many people, it didn't matter if they were wrestling fans, uh, your friends they that might not be wrestling fans they were still wanted to come watch the pay-per-view because my friends are going to be there too like that's that's what i always picked up from that line i i thought that was really significant because i, I look at, i take a look at my older sister and her friends who were about 18 to 20 at the time and i was a 11 or 12 year old and i was you know a hardcore fan since i was four years old so i i was already been a hardcore fan for a decade uh, but again, those people, my older sister's friends, were all into it, and they weren't even wrestling fans. And uh, they just wanted to see Stone Cold. They just wanted to see what Stone Cold would do. And then eventually, enough people that did that caught on to The Rock, and then they wanted to see what The Rock would do. In the 1998, it was so hard not to be captivated by both guys because The Rock's work in the nation of domination was just underrated as hell. First of all, my name is Brett Mix. This is Macho Wrestling 101. Hit like and subscribe if you would like to see my videos. I pump out classic history of wrestling videos daily. And uh, I also stick up to date with Raw, SmackDown. So if you hit subscribe but if you hit the subscribe button, you would do me a great favor. I'd appreciate that. I'm trying to grow the channel. But uh, here we go. SummerSlam 1998. Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler are doing commentary. And uh, here we go. The highway to hell begins. The European Championships on the line first. Steel Brown took on Val Venus. Brown was the defending champion in the heel the, and uh, part of the nation at the time. V Val Venus was the challenger and he was getting his first title shot after debuting a few months earlier. Uh, so both guys in their first SummerSlam match ever uh, put on a really good contest here. Uh, at the end, Jimmy Cordeas told both guys not to go up with the top rope. Uh, Venus then uh, fell off the top rope and eventually an atomic drop and a clothesline to D'Lo Brown. Cordeas went over to Val Venus again, so Val shoved the referee down this time, Cordeas. Brown got the chest protector and uh, he, Val had put it on earlier in the match. Brown got the chest protector back, and when he did, the referee disqualified Val Venus at 15:31. So D'Lo won by disqualification. But outside the finish, which which could have been much better, uh, this match was pretty great. I actually really liked it as an opener. The D'Lo was underrated as hell, and Val could work with him, and they both put on an excellent match here. He rated three stars and a quarter. Uh, that's excellent for these guys, anyway. Excellent for main eventers, obviously, or is more in the four-star range. But these guys are uh, great mid-carders, and they, they did a good job. Um, next, we had an uh, odd match. We had the oddities. Odd oddities. Kurgan, Golga, and Giant Silva, who had Luna Vachon and Violent J and Shaggy Tudope of the Insane Clown Posse with them. First, Dig Togo Men's Taiyo Show Funaki Takamishinoku with Yamaguchi san. Tai and Tai. Um, this, big, this tag match was, uh, it went on a little long. It went on 10 minutes and 8 seconds when Golga covered all four Eagles. Uh, and Golga wasn't even the legal man Kurgan was. Uh, the Oddities win a very bad match that I rate only a star. And that's just because the crowd seemed to be having fun. MSG. They were still uh, on a high from the opener. And uh, it just bet, it just continued from there. 
Next up, we got X Pac versus Double J in a hair versus hair match. Uh, Howard Finkel was in X Pac's corner as a part of DX. I uh, don't know why, but he was. That's better than him asking MSG how his haircut uh, was, like he did four years earlier at WrestleMania. Uh, at WrestleMania 10, he did that. Well, how's my haircut? Is it good? Thank you. That's the thing, right? I don't know. I used to be able to do his voice. Intercontinental Championship! Uh, somewhat. X Pac hit a spinning heel kick uh, on Double J to get things going, and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, exciting moves like tornado DDTs, uh, Bronco Busters, the usual from X Pac. Uh, X Pac covered him for the win at eleven ten. This was a really good match here. I also rated three stars. Uh, I thought. I thought uh, it went well. Southern Justice, who were the formerly known as the Godwins, yeah, tried to hit X Pac with the, with the guitar, and uh, X Pac avoided it and got the guitar, nailed Jarrett in the head, while the referee didn't see it, and X Pac got the cover for that win at eleven ten. So yeah, three stars for that match. Another good match there. Then Jeff, Jeff Jarrett, no more long hair Jeff Jarrett. They got the Clippers out, and now a new new Jarrett would, would be born with the short hair. I think he had more success with the short hair than he did the long hair, but nonetheless, some wrestlers do, some wrestlers don't when that happens. Some wrestlers aren't even affected by it, like The Undertaker. It was really weird to see The Undertaker when he first cut his hair. Back in 01, late 01. Um, next up, we had a mixed tag match. Sable and Edge take on Jacqueline and Mark Merrow. Edge is brand new to the company at the time. He had only been on Raw like once or twice. Um, and uh, in this one, they had a mixed tag match just like they did at WrestleMania, only Goldust and Luna are not involved. It's, instead, it's Jacqueline and Edge. Um, Edge Edge did well in there for being new. Uh, Sable hit a hurricane runner from the top to try and put her, hus her husband putting his wife over. Um, did a spot where Jackie's head inadvertently hit Marrow in the groin. Edge hit a downward spiral and Sables did the Sable slam onto Marrow, so Sable pinned Marrow at 824. The per the big spot was the Hurricane Run off the top. Decent match up here. Uh, I rated a star in three quarters, so 1.75. Um, really just moderate action in this match. It could have been a raw match, but, uh, Sable was so over that uh, it, the crowd was hot for all of it. So that's how over Sable was. Then we had the Lions Dead match with Ken Shamrock and Owen Hart. The month before this, a fully loaded, they went to Owen Hart's uh, house in the dungeon and they wrestled in the dungeon. And now they go to Ken Shamrock. That was that was Owen's world. Now they go to Shamrock's world inside the Lions Den uh, octagon. So they go inside and uh, have this match where it's shoot wrestling with some amateur MMA submissions involved. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, the counter wrestling was as good as the chain wrestling. Uh, they they tried many holds and they kept it entertaining without it being redundant or without it getting boring. So I rate this as also three stars. Uh, that's the third three star match if I'm counting. And uh, Shamrock got the victory with an ankle lock at 9-16. So, solid match there. Next, we had the Outlaws versus Kane and Mankind, even though it was just Mankind because Kane didn't show up, so it was more of a handicap match. Typical Mick Foley getting the shit kicked out of him and bumping like hell. It made it entertaining, plus Kane's whereabouts was, was a question, plus the Outlaws were very over, and this only went 5-17, so... Kane's appearance out of the dumpster uh, that, and then he walked to the back it, it just came out of nowhere but the Outlaws did a spike pile driver to Mankind on um, one of the tag team titles and at 517 the Outlaws retain uh, so good job by Mick Foley in the match and, and the Outlaws for keeping it simple and to the point next up the IC titles on the line when The Rock defends versus Triple H 
Mark Henry comes out in The Rock's corner while China has, is in Triple H's corner. The Rock's been the Intercontinental Champion all year, uh, calendar year of uh, 1998, and, well, a bit of 97. Uh, he's been the Intercontinental Champion for a long time, and, and Triple H was his biggest challenge here, and this is the latter match. They are. This is also the second big ladder match to happen in in the WWF in Madison Square Garden because the first one was Shawn and Razor. Well, the first big one, not the first ever ladder match, but the first big one at WrestleMania happened between Shawn and Razor in this arena. So, the there's a play to that. But these guys found ways to innovate offense. They're not high flyers, so the fact that these two guys were going to have a ladder match, the, you'd wonder how it was going to be. Uh, and both guys did a great job bumping. They got the crowd in, into it. The crowd was on their feet the entire time. China snuck up behind The Rock and hit him in the Golden Jewels with a low blow. The crowd went wild for that as Hunter reached up in, at 24-32 to become the new Intercontinental Champion. I give this match four stars. I think it's a classic ladder match. Um, it's not your typical high-flying ladder match. It's a little bit slower in parts, but it it's... Uh, it definitely holds well still today. Uh, two mid cutters that were destined to gain success in the upper card, so definitely holds a good place today. Even though Triple H's title reign didn't last very long because of injury, um, but The Rock lost his title finally, and uh, that was a good way to do it. Next up, we have Austin and The Undertaker and The Highway to Hell. Both guys were babyface at the time. This was not their first encounter. They've, they've encountered each other before. Uh, they'd go, they did a cold day in hell. They would also go on to do many other matches. Uh, later that year, Buried Alive at Rock Bottom, Fully Loaded 99, Over the Edge 99. They did a lot of matches together. Uh, and even on June 1999 on Raw, where that's the highest rated Raw match ever, uh, Austin pinned Undertaker to become the champion. But these guys, they, it was big that the fact that they only had met each other once, and it was not really high profiles. Austin wasn't as over then as he was now. So this felt like a brand new thing at SummerSlam here. Uh, both guys were faces, but Austin got the ultimate pop. He got he got the benefit of the doubt from others. Um, Kane came back to the ring, and Undertaker told him to leave, told him he wanted to do it on its own. Stone Cold kind of got knocked out during this match. Uh, the lights were on, but nobody was home for a little bit of it due to a, a possible concussion where he ran into Undertaker. They both kind of just went sideways in the mid-ring. Um, Austin regained consciousness. Uh, not, I don't know if he regained full consciousness, but he regained it pretty quickly in order to continue the match. The Undertaker and Austin uh, are total pros for continuing it, and a uh, big spot by The Undertaker onto the table. Uh, Stone Cold won eventually with a stunner, and then a low blow, and then another stunner after the old school didn't go well, and Austin punched him in the groin. And then a stunner at 20.50 to retain the WWF title. Uh, I rate this also four stars, just like the ladder match. I think um, I think the booking behind it, the the story, the highway to hell, the video package, the everything was done great here. Uh, there wasn't and there wasn't over. This wasn't overly booked. It was simple and to the point. Austin's the champion. He's defending it, going in against another popular wrestler, The Undertaker. Austin's keeping it. So a lot of three-star matches and a lot of four-star matches. So I'm giving this SummerSlam an 8 out of 10. Uh, SummerSlam 1998, 8 out of 10. That's the highest rating I've given a SummerSlam so far. So, yeah, so far it, this is the highest it's gotten. Uh, we'll see how it goes at, into the later years for SummerSlam. I'm Brett Mix from Ultra Wrestling 101. This is SummerSlam 98. See you in the future SummerSlam reviews. Thanks for watching. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.